This build is sponsored by wood to works where you can get quality woods for your luthery, turning and carving needs. They ship worldwide and have a great service to help you choose through their great selection.
was in the process of building the neck, I added two reinforcement, the carbon fiber reinforcement truss rod in there. And I also put a double action truss rod. And I mentioned that I didn't know if I would still be able to move the neck either way, uh, just because those, those are pretty stiff. Uh, I did say also that I would come back and let you guys know my findings. So right now, uh, the, the double action truss rod here is in the loose position. And then if I put a straight edge on here, I have a gap here. Uh, in the center. So there's a bit of relief already and uh, what I measure with my filler gauge was, which I can't find right now, was uh, 0 0.005. That was uh, uh, the relief I had here. So now uh, let's see if we can bring it back. So to do that I've got the neck locked in and the back of the instrument as well that's secured and then I'm going to pull down on it. So by pulling, I'm relieving the actual tension, all the tension from the position I'm trying to achieve from the truss rod, but I actually apply it with pressure. That would be maxed out right now. And now it's rocking from the center. So there is an obvious a pretty obvious movement, although it's very minimal for the amount that I moved here. Uh, and then I could basically bring it back to the other way. So that's completely on the other side. And then yeah, I do have a gap in the middle there. So this shows me it was actually a good idea to uh, add the double action truss rod uh, in this instrument because I will be able to further adjust the relief uh, at a later stage. The thing with those instruments and uh, the people that have built them in the past from like a, a guitar neck standpoint because it's it's a long neck like this one is 25 and a half scale. Uh, it's been shown that the truss rod itself is not enough to keep the neck from coming back in the long term. So by adding those two reinforcement rods, that's going to help a lot. It's going to help bring the vibration to the body and then uh, further adjustment with the truss, uh, the truss rod in there. So uh, those were my findings. So I've just adjusted the fretboard now to a position that it's touching mostly everywhere and that's going to allow me to do the uh, fret leveling so uh, there's no more gap here or at the end so uh, I just added a tiny bit of tension towards the back
way we are. So the fretboard is installed. Uh, the frets are all cleaned up, so I did the fret job on them. Uh, it's only rough sanded for now because uh, I, I, I want to do like testing everything. Uh, some of you might have noticed that uh, the binding is installed on the peg head, but there was nothing on the video. Uh, that's because I did a video about that before and I'll leave a link at the end for that. So I didn't want to uh, add extra material for uh, no purpose. Uh, I want to go ahead and start the bridge as soon as possible to put some strings on it. Uh, we're getting really, really close. Uh, I want to mention here, you can follow on Instagram and also on my website. I have two blogs. Uh, one is uh, Today's in the Shop and the other one's Tips and Tricks. And I'll leave a link in the description as well for those for you guys to have a look at uh, what's happening in the shop in real time. Uh, Instagram is another good place and Facebook uh, on my uh, Ovington Instrument page is another uh, good resource to see what's happening uh, on a day-to-day -day or weekly basis if you if you will. I've also put a weight onto this instrument uh, as, is, as it is right now so I was curious to know and you guys have been following you know that I've been kind of trying to figure out every part how much it was weighing. Uh, so as it stands right now I'm at 5.8 pounds before the hardware and the hardware will account for about 0.5 pounds. So that puts me exactly where I wanted to do for weight. If you go back to my early videos, I said I wanted between 6.5 and 7.5, I think I said. But uh, I'm from, from what I, I can see right now, I'm gonna be exactly there. I still have the binding to install, and the reason, like the binding should be on by now, but because it's a first time build that I'm making, uh, uh, I want to make sure of the integrity of the soundboard before I actually close everything up with some binding. So I've skipped that step. Uh, I'll go back after the sound test is done and I'll probably leave the instrument strung for about two weeks just to make sure that everything is where I want to be, that there's no uh, over, over pressure onto the body. Very responsive uh, from the neck. Also, I, I can feel the body resonating just from a hit at the top here, so the vibration will tra tra transfer, uh, I believe, very, very nicely. The next video will be on how I come up with the intonation for a floating bridge. There's no adjustment available for a bridge like that, so you need to be right on target. And I'll make a video coming up on that so I can get started and make the bridge. I already took a measurement for height. Uh, so I can start designing my bridge from the, the angle I have and I'm pretty happy on where uh, it sits and for the height of it as well uh, to keep a break angle that fits my drawings and stuff. So uh, the next video hopefully I'll be able to answer that question that came uh, quite often in the past few years on how uh, I can manage to find the proper intonation. Another thing I'm going to be doing uh, while doing that is the string spacing because the string spacing for those uh, low C are going to probably have to be a, a, a bit wider than uh, like the octave mandolin and the string course is longer as well. So we don't want those strings to end up rattling on one another and have that annoying sound. So I'm going to have to make some tests as well to uh, predetermine that before I put the slots in my nut here. So. Uh, a lot of uh, finishing work coming up, but um, I think it uh, looks very promising. So I want to take a minute now to uh, give a big thank you again uh, to Bar River Wood Tool Works for uh, uh, their involvement in uh, supplying most of the woods for this build. Uh, like the quality is once again amazing. Uh, the instrument is just incredible. I've got, I can't wait to pop the figure on, on this uh, instrument. There's a nice curl on the side and the back and then a uh, torrified Sitka top. Uh, that's going to be uh, looking very nice, I believe. So, uh, big thank you for uh, Bar River again. Do have a look at their uh, wood selection for either uh, instrument building, wood turning or other uh, I figured woods you might be looking for. Don't forget to uh, check me on my social media, Instagram, Facebook and also my webpage. I've got the two blogs that I've mentioned earlier. I really appreciate your time and for watching this video and until next time, I wish you well.